Hello and welcome to the fifth instalment of Osborne Clark's um, Building Safety Video and Insight series where experts from across the firm will be unpacking some of the key issues from the Building Safety Bill which is currently going through Parliament. My name is Robert Jetty, I'm a solicitor in our Construction Disputes and Risk Team and I'm joined today by Rebecca Francis, a solicitor in our Property Disputes and Risk Team. Today we're going to be talking about the funding of building safety measures under the Building Safety Bill. Hello, Rebecca. Hello, Rob. Hi. Um, so um, the funding of remedial works for fire safety issues obviously been a really important topic over the last uh, few years. Um, what does the Building Safety Bill have to say about who should pay for safety measures? Um, well, obviously, you know, funding is such an important aspect of all of this, you know, who ultimately um, should and will end up paying um, for, for works to, to their building. Um, but I, I do think it's important in the context of the Building Safety Bill to distinguish between the, the cladding crisis and fire safety and other building safety measures that, that might be needed at buildings. I think the government, particularly in this, the, with this bill, is trying to, to look um, a bit more prospectively in terms of making sure buildings um, get the works that they, they need um, in order to, to make sure that they comply with you know, changing regulations going forwards. Um, and they, I think they have made a, a, a sort of concerted effort to say, well, this is not um, the part about funding is less about the, the historic defects. Obviously, you've spoken about um, liability, which the bill does pick up on in terms of um, historic defects. But in terms of cladding and fire safety, the government is trying to trying to say that there's other initiatives in terms mm -hmm. of funding there, the building safety fund um, or the developer tax levy, etc. Um, so. I think it's important just to, to when you're looking at the, the funding provisions in this bill is to, to keep in mind that it is it is sort of more future gazing um, and looking at um, once you've, you've got look, putting aside defects, um, funding works that may be required in future. Uh, that's interesting. So, I mean, putting to one side um, the fire safety issues that are focused on, well, at least initially, cladding, mm -hmm. um, what are the, the key aspects of the bill um, in terms of the funding of future building safety measures? Um, so uh, the, a really, really important part of the bill is um, introducing a new concept of a building safety charge. And essentially, it's going to imply terms into all residential leases that fall within the, the, the scope of the bill. Um, and it, it, it really is... Um, the way that the government is trying to, to plug the gaps um, in terms of making sure that firstly obligations for undertaking um, safety works and the payment don't fall through the drafting gaps in, in existing leases because obviously um, you know leases vary from building to building and depending how old they are as well. Um, so although the, the building safety charge, I think it, the, the mechanics of it um, are, are set to be very similar to service charge mechanisms and, and provisions that we're all used to seeing, um, it is it, 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 again, it's it's um, to, to make sure that um, building safety works do get undertaken and there isn't, as we're, we're seeing um, with the cladding, um, quite a lot of um, arguments around, well, does the, does the drafting of the lease actually say that A, who, who is responsible for doing works to, say, the structure? Um, and ultimately, can those costs be passed down? And that's where we're seeing quite a lot of friction at the moment between landlords and leaseholders or building owners and leaseholders. Um, so it is a, a really important uh, concept and one that um, you know, building owners, managers and leaseholders are going to have to, have to get to, to grips with. Um, although, you know, depending on how comprehensive your existing lease, leases are, it may just be a bit of a cost shifting exercise because arguably right. if, if service charges already provide for this or the, you know, it will just be shifting it into a building safety charge rather than the service charge. Okay, so is the government essentially saying that the costs are going to be passed down to the leaseholders then? Um, I think to a certain extent, 
yes um they th there's been a, a flurry of actually of, of of more guidance that's come out from the government more recently and they've tried to emphasize that um it will be a narrowly defined list of works that fall within building safety measures but i think that will you know it remains to be seen how how tight that that drafting really plays out in practice um so uh, again as i as i explained earlier they are really trying to say this is this is a prospective measure about ensuring your bu your building you know keeps up with regulations um however you know they are trying to build in um protections for leaseholders so for example the building safety charge has to be ring fenced from other operational uh, costs you know your service charge under under leases um leaseholders will have the ability to to challenge the building saf safety charge again much like it, it, it they can already with service charges and making applications to the tribunal um, and also um, consultation so the same if you're about to do a scheme of major works if you're about to undertake um, works to, that, that fall within the scope of building safety measures um, it's likely that building owners and landlords will have to consult first um, also, the the other big thing which the bill is making making clear is that um, landlords will first have to explore any third party funding options before they can pass it down to leaseholders. Um, so they have to look at insurance, warranties, or what you you know if you're if you're talking about defects, you're you're yeah. you're looking at is there any other third party liability. Um, so there is that added protection there, but the bill does make it clear that it's not a sort of prerequisite that you have to obtain that funding before you can start start the works and obviously that makes sense because these are works that need to need to get done um, so I think it it, it 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 may end up being a bit of lip service but I think you know the intention is yes it will ultimately fall to leaseholders if there's no one else that that can be looked or called upon okay I see um, and Finally, do you envisage any problems for landlords or tenants with the proposals as they're currently drafted? Um, I, I think with anything, there are bound to be teething problems. Um, and, you know, however the, the actual drafting ends up, um, there's, there's likely to be an influx of tribunal applications as, you know, uh, property owners and, and managers and leaseholders get to grips with their new obligations and what they can and can't, um, you know, recharge under this new building safety charge. Um, and so I think, you know, that's, that's almost inevitable. Um, but I think the government, what they're trying to do with quite a long lead in time um, is to try and emphasise that building owners should be doing as much as they can now to get their processes in place, to try and minimise, you know, the impact on, on management costs as well. Um, and, and another thing that fundamentally came out this week was um, the government emphasising that the, the building safety charge will actually be sort of implemented before or in advance of um, the new duties under under the bill um, to make sure, I suppose, that, that land uh, building owners and, and those accountable people are going to be um, in a position to be able to recharge certain costs or have confidence that will be able to do to do that um, before undertaking those works. So of course, there's gonna be a period of adjustment, um, but fundamentally, I think it's about engaging now, even though the bill's still in draft form, um, and so making things, sure that things you know, don't come as a surprise when it ultimately comes into law. Okay, thanks very much, Rebecca, um, and thanks very much for joining us. Please do join us again for the final instalment of our Building Safety Video Insight Series where we'll be looking at why the bill is important for real estate investors.